Hello. It's been a while since we've done a uh, grumpy book review, and for those of you who are hoping for some really top-grade bitching and grumping, uh, unfortunately the book that I'm reviewing today is not making me very grumpy. Um, it's a book called Simply Preservation, The Art and Science of Canning, Fermentation, and Dehydration, written by Christina Ward, who is I think still a resident of my home state of Wisconsin. She is the master food preserver for Milwaukee County, which means that she is a member, I believe, of the University of Wisconsin Extension System. And her job is to teach people how to can and preserve food, which sounds pretty dull, unless you're part of the, the canning fad that's going on right now. I tried making some sauerkraut for a while and I actually really enjoyed it so I picked up this book thinking it would be of interest at least from a uh, mechanics of making sauerkraut point of view and it's actually of interest from a, a sort of food historical point of view which isn't something I think about a lot but which possibly made this a more interesting read for me. There's a lot of stuff about gut biome obviously if you're if you're making uh, fermented, home fermented foods that can do a lot more for your uh, intestinal health and your colonies of good gut bacteria than, than uh, you know, pills full of probiotics that have been sitting on your uh, local store shelf for six years. I knew that children are exposed to colonies of their mother's gut bacteria in the birth canal, but I did not know that you kind of pick this shit up just from being in the environment that you're in when you're a kid. Like part of, um, part of getting sick when you move to a new area is that you're exposed to bacteria that are not already colonizing your body and you, you feel a little weird because there's a bunch of other crap in you. Um, which would explain why I'm so healthy all the time, because when I was a kid, I did a lot of rolling in pigeon shit. True story. My grandma had a barn that was full of pigeons that we were allowed to play in all the time, and, uh, yeah, that's, that, that's why I'm superhuman. Well, aside from the evidence for why, uh, Anna Kasparian and I are better than you, um, God, that meme is getting old, but it still makes me laugh. Anyway. Aside from proving why I'm superhuman, this book is, it, it looks thick. Let's get a good look at it. It looks thick. It looks a little daunting. I was like, oh boy, this is going to be a long review. But actually the, the information, the entert inf infotainment bit is kind of squished at the beginning of the book. And then you get into really practical advice for how to can foods without hurting yourself. And then you get into lots and lots of neat recipes. Just stuff I'm probably never going to do because I'm lazy and I don't really have much of it. But now I really know how to make sauerkraut and do it right. I can make kimchi. Um, I guess if I ever get my shit together, I can even make kombucha, which is amazing, amazing shit. I started drinking kombucha because I have, I don't know, six or seven ulcers floating around in my system and that seemed to help. I started drinking it for my stomach, and then I kept drinking it because it's kind of an addictive, it's not like crack, but it's, it, it, you start to crave it after a while. I don't know if it's because of the trace amounts of alcohol, or the trace amounts of sugar, or just the fact that it makes you feel good, or it's didn't agree tasty, or whatever. Anyway, I could save a lot of money if I got my shit together and did this. If you have a nice kitchen, if you have a lot of equipment, and if you have an interest in preserving your own foods, this is a highly recommended primer, and it is it is entertaining. Here's a uh, representative paragraph of some of the more entertaining parts of the book, which I would say include, um, as I said, the food history, and then the list of things that stupid people do when they're trying to can food and wind up killing their friends and neighbors instead. Here is the food landscape before the 1820s. It helps to understand the role physics plays in the ability to preserve food if we imagine what dinner was like for your average peasant, worker, soldier, and sailor into the 1600s through the 1800s. Really recent. And germ theory was so fucking recent. It blows my mind. 
how much of history was spent with people not realizing what caused disease. Um, if you were a farmer in 1780s Europe, you grew only the crops demanded by your landlord. You turned over his allocation and kept the small remainder. Some villages used a model where everything went to the lord of the manor and he determined how much food his serfs received. Meat was a rarity, hunting and fishing weren't something one did on a whim, all animals belonged to the local lord, and harvesting as much as a rabbit would get you arrested, or worse, for poaching. This feudal system of land management was standard throughout all regions of the world before the 1800s-ish. So, maybe, maybe elementary history to you, but there are probably tidbits in here for just about everybody. Um, the most entertaining part of the book, though, is... Uh, called the dumb, one of the most entertaining books is, parts of the book is called The Dumbest of the Dumb, in which the author talks about the various ways people have decided they can preserve food by heating it somewhat. My favorite being dishwasher canning, filling jars, putting on the lids, then running through a hot cycle of the dishwasher. Again, no, yeah, you're not going to get the inside of the can heated up or not. Heated up enough to kill anything. I mean, I barely trust dishwashers just to wash my dishes, much less to preserve food and put it on a shelf for six weeks. Modern food preservation has done a lot of good things for humanity, but it's also sort of slowed down evolution, like most of the things in modern society. I was lighting a match the other day, and I thought, like, we're, we're all running around with cell phones thinking about how clever we are because we can post our little thoughts to Facebook. But how many of us could actually invent matches? Like, we're all sort of living on this pile of human in innovation that's happened slowly, one genius at a time, and most of us are just sitting on top of it going, oh, I can't be killed, no. Well, maybe that's an argument for doing more uh, home preservation. The idiots and their relatives will be killed off by canning shit in the dishwasher and then eating it six months later. I think home canning is an excellent idea for modern society. Everybody, get your cans, your dishwasher ready. Don't read this book. Just boil meat for ten minutes and then eat it six weeks later. Talk to you later.